I love Galaxy Express 3.9. It's such a deeply important series to me, so much so that I know I can't show you any of it, lest Toei Animation's sick paro on me for making a video under criticism and fair use, thereby allowing me to use their footage legally without permission. Which means it's time to leap to a dimension that they have a little less dominion over. Video games. I think I'm safe here anyways. Galaxy Express 3.9 is a franchise spanning over 40 years now, so it's not surprising that there have been some video games here and there. But for a franchise with such a fabled history, there's some weird stuff going on in here. First things first, I'm only talking about the individual Galaxy Express releases, not games that feature Galaxy Express in them. Otherwise, this video would be double the length and consist mostly of rhythm games. Though, I gotta say, that Photon made its remix in D4DJ? Mwah, that's funky, I love it. Secondly, I'm not going to talk about Cosmo Warrior Zero, since it's a bit closer to Captain Harlock than Galaxy Express, and the fact that it served as the basis for an anime and not the other way around means it's probably worth a second look on its own. But with the formalities out of the way, it's time to get started with the first game release, Freedom Fighter. Okay, brief history lesson for all you gamers out there. In 1983, a little-known game by the name of Dragon's Lair was released to arcades. Its standout feature was its utilization of Laserdisc technology to have the game made completely from animation created by former Disney animator Don Bluth. 90s kids might know him better for some of these. It might not have been anything more than a quick-time event simulator, but it didn't stop Dragon's Lair from taking arcades by storm, making gangbusters and essentially birthing the FMV genre of video games, which still sees releases to this day. Naturally, when something is successful, everyone wants in on it, and for that there were three paths publishers would take. The first is commissioning original animations specifically for the purpose of the game. These would be games like Space Ace and the Toei animated Time Gal. The second would be using live actors for a similar effect, which would result in games like Mad Dog McCree or Death Come True for a more modern example. The third, and by far the cheapest way, was for a company to obtain the rights to an already existing property and then splice the assets together to create a game based on that, as is the case for 1986's Freedom Fighter, which primarily lifts its presentation from the 1981 film Adu Galaxy Express 3.9, as well as its preceding film. If any of this sounds familiar to any Lupin the Third fans watching, it's because the exact same thing happened with Cliffhanger, combining Castle of Cagliostro and Mystery of Mamo, but that's a talk for another time. Anyways, being a niche arcade game, it's naturally hard to find, and it hasn't seen any recent re-releases. There was a version fully playable on YouTube created by a fan, but it was taken down some time ago. Not even because of copyright, I think it was just lack of interest. Not that it would work today anyways because of YouTube axing annotations, but it would have made finding footage a lot easier. Turns out though, there is a recreation created by Emuline user FamiWizard that was released in 2020, which is the version I'll be using. It's not perfect, it acts as the freedom of movement, it just plays through all the levels in sequence, and there's a bunch of other quirks, but beggars can't be choosers. And the fact that a niche game like this is being preserved in a playable state in this quality at all is admirable. Though I also want to mention the work of A. Moroboshi on YouTube, who's been working on and off on restoring and upscaling the Laserdisc footage. I can't say if we'll ever see this footage working in a playable state, not that I think that's the end game, anyways but it's still really cool to see how this would've looked like in the arcade. Then, of course, there's the single home port that it got, Escape from Cyber City, which was released in 1993 on everyone's favorite punching bag, the Philips CDI. The versions are largely identical, but I'll mention the few changes there are when needed. As described by the opening crawl, the Earth is in a war with the race of cyborgs led by a figure known as the Guardian. Humanity's only hope lies with the Rookie. Actually, it's Tetsuro Hoshi. Actually, wait, this was back in the 90s before the Viz dub. What did they name him again? Calling me kid! I happen to have a name! It's Joey Hannah Cannababa Cananda Smith! What the f- Anyways, with the gun given to him by this old man, the rookie has to fight his way through Cyber City, make it to the train, fly to the cyborg's home base, and blow the Guardian's lights out. It's nothing too complex, but I will say, disregarding the space train and the conductor just kind of messing around throughout the city, the game does a good job creating a scenario that stands independently from the source material. Obviously it's not terribly unique, but given that this is taken from the beginning and very end of the second movie, the fact that it could feasibly be played by someone who knows nothing about Galaxy Express is commendable, and I'm sure it was good for business back then. It's a shame about the rest of the gameplay though. 
Unlike Dragon's Lair, which was essentially quick time events, the game, in Escape from Cyber City you live and die by the gun. When moving, the cursor indicates where you'll move, and in combat you'll have to win the quick draw. Shoot too slow and you're cooked. Lose 3 lives and it's back to the start with you. It's an old arcade game, this is all par for the course. But when playing on console, the game is doubly unfair. See, the original Freedom Fighter uses this sort of mounted gun, so one could, in theory, survive the game on pure reflexes. That's not enough on a controller. Here you have to use an on-screen cursor, and as one might expect, it doesn't move nearly fast enough. So even if you have the reflexes to shoot the instant an enemy pops up, unless the cursor was already in the general area, that's the end for Joey on a Monopia Smith. Even playing on PC, the difficulty is kind of all over the place. Sometimes I could survive on pure reflexes, other times blindly firing seemed to produce better results. Also, the game defaults to hard, because of course it does. And while you can switch it to be easier, that reveals a new problem, which is that the difficulty only really serves to mask the fact that the game is only 5 minutes long if you know what you're doing. It won't happen the first time, since you can end up going in circles and generally find optional scenes, especially if you take the cab, but it is possible. Oh hey look, the baseball minigame is real, look at that. It's a harmless game, not terribly great, not offensively bad, but it is an interesting curio in terms of both the history of FMV games and in terms of English Galaxy Express releases, and for that it has merit. Next up on the docket is Lezzy Matsumoto's 3-9, Story of Galaxy Express 3-9 for the PlayStation 1. It's not exactly a name that rolls off the tongue. This is probably the most widely known game I'll be talking about today. It was a big budget game spanning two whole discs and it was released in 2001, right around the time Galaxy Express was getting new content with the second manga series and Eternal Fantasy. The story serves as a retelling of the plot of the anime, depicting Tetsuro and Meitel's journey across the stars aboard the 3-9. Of course, I said it's a retelling, as it isn't exactly one-to-one -one with the original, which you can see as early as the encounter with Count Mecha. In the show, Tetsuro rolls up and decimates everyone in the mansion, but in this game, he shows up as before, but this time he gets rocked. Not killed though, I guess he siphoned some of that luck from Joey Anamanaguchi. But this means the plot has Tetsuro seeking a mechanical body in order to take on Count Mecha, similar to the movie. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this game was trying to blend the timelines of both the show and the movies and finally make it into a cohesive whole, but I'd know this is just how Matsumoto's storytelling works. I'd love to go more in depth into the changes made to the story, but I can only really engage with it on a surface level, because as I'm sure you can tell, the game's only in Japanese. My Japanese isn't exactly up to snuff, I'm not gonna get Nihongo Josu'd anytime soon. And if my ability to speak Japanese is bad, my ability to read it is basically non-existent. So I can't read the story, and while I'd love to say that the gameplay makes up for that, it unfortunately doesn't. Most of the gameplay consists of walking around and talking to people in pursuit of the next bit of story, and without knowing the language, it can be shockingly hard to figure out where to go. I spent way too long on Mars. There's gameplay besides that, like Maeve solving, time sections, shootouts, whatever this is, and by the time you hit the second disc, you can even play as other characters with their own story beats and missions. The game has no shortage of variety, both in terms of gameplay and environments, and man this game looks pretty. I know the chunky PS1 style graphics are a bit of an acquired taste these days, but I think it looks beautiful for the era, and Matsumoto's distinct visual style lends itself very well to these graphics. I can tell this has a lot of money and care put into it, and for a licensed anime game, that's a rarity even today. I just wish I could read it. I'm not going to sit here and complain about how Story of Galaxy Express focuses on the story, that would be dumb, but it's a case where outside circumstances keep me from engaging with the game as much as I would like, which is a shame. I'm still holding out hope for a fan translation. It'll be a lot of work, and I'm sure there's some technical reasons that have kept people from cracking this game open, but if people can get games like Mizuruna Falls and Tokimeki Memorial and give them fan translations decades after their initial release, there's still hope for Story of Galaxy Express. Here's a bit of a weird one, Space Hexite Maytel Legend EX. I've never heard of this game up until a few weeks ago, so it's cool to see something new. This one's a puzzle game, and to make sure I'm not completely making things up, I did dabble in a previous Hexite game that was in English. Basically the gist is that you place down shapes on various sizes on the board, with more points being given the more spaces you cover, and then your opponent does the same. The board is split into multiple colored hexagons, by having a piece spread out between two different hexagons, 
you get bonus points, and if you're the player that finishes filling a hexagon, you get even more bonuses. It's kinda like dots and boxes, actually. You wanna fill up as much space as you can, but the way you wanna get more points is by setting up your pieces in such a way that the other player is forced to let you have the bonus. Of course, you lose points for any pieces that you have left over if no other pieces can be placed, with more points being lost for the more complex shapes, so there's risk there too. But honestly, this one's pretty fun. I'm not that great at it, and it's not exactly going to be my go-to competitive puzzle game, but if I were to put this on a TV and play it with friends, it'd be a good time. I can't exactly speak for the story mode since, again, no Nihongo Jozu, and I actually haven't seen Maytel Legend or Space Symphony Maytel yet. Look, my knowledge of Galaxy Express is expansive, but my knowledge of the Legiverse on the whole needs some work, but I'm getting there. Basically, I can't really say if this one's a worthwhile pickup for Galaxy Express fans other than for collection's sake, but it's a fun puzzle game, and ultimately that's what matters most. Before I go on to the next game, I want to go on a brief tangent, because making this video pulled some forbidden memories from my brain. Manga Do Galaxy Express 3.9 I know it's not a game, but it's an app, so that's close enough for me. Basically, it was an elaborate video player that played an adaptation of the original manga, in color, voiced, and with slight bits of animation. You know those manga animations Viz Media has on their Twitter? It's kinda like that, except spread far thinner with less budget. Very ahead of its time in that regard, and for the time, it was the most accessible way to access the manga in English, but you've probably noticed the past tense I've been using. Yeah, it never got very far, I don't even think it made it to Mars. It was delisted at some point, and even if it wasn't, the Great iOS 11 Massacre probably wouldn't have been kind. I just wanted to talk about it because finding anything on it is nearly impossible. I never see anyone talking about it, there's almost no information or articles talking about it, and if I didn't happen to track down a handful of clips on Mongado's long-defunct YouTube channel, I might have been convinced the whole thing was a delusion I made up. Nope, it's very real, or it was anyways, and it gets to sit with Freedom Fighter in the pile of interesting English Galaxy Express releases, right next to the New World Pictures dub and the S'more Entertainment DVDs. Man, I'm busting out all the obscure knowledge today. The final stop today is the most recent of the games, Galaxy Express 39 on the Nintendo DS. One last tangent, I swear, but I have to pay my respects, because if we want to talk about crazy domino effects, this game is almost single-handedly responsible for turning me into the person I am today. Let me explain. The year is 2011. A me that's way too young to have this much unrestricted internet access just discovered Galaxy Express through a video about Escape from Cyber City, and when I looked into its source material, it was love at first sight. I wanted to know everything I could, watch whatever was available, and look into every piece of media I could. Lo and behold, around that same time, Galaxy Express 3.9 DS came out. Awesome! Being me, I naturally tried to find whatever I could about the game. The problem is, finding info about a recently released Japanese DS game, a very niche one at that, isn't exactly easy. So when I googled Galaxy Express 3.9 DS, Google didn't exactly know what to do with me, and Google doing what they do best, they admitted parts of my search in order to spit me out to what they thought I was looking for. This was in 2011, so my search of Galaxy Express 39 DS just became 999 DS. Some of you might be ahead of me, but yeah, this is how I was introduced to 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors, before it was even known as the Zero Escape Trilogy. And while I'd still be a few years out from actually playing that game, the little bits I saw of it kept it in the back of my mind until that fateful day in February 2013 when I finally bought my copy forever changing the trajectory of my life. So yeah, perhaps indirectly, but Galaxy Express 3.9 DS is an important game in my personal history, even having not played it up until this point, and for that it will always have my respect. Unfortunately, I can't speak much for the actual game. Unlike Story Of, which was a retelling of the original story, this one's a straight adaptation. I think I got the difference between those terms, right? Basically, this is the anime, you can tell because it uses screen caps from the old episodes, and Count Mecha gets rocked in the first 10 minutes just as before. Okay, it's not exactly one-to-one -one for gameplay purposes, like how Geronimo ends up joining you as a party member. Don't ask me how, I can't read, I guess he was holding on to coins too. I'm not sure how much it adapts, I very much doubt that all 113 episodes made the cut, 
but if I had to wager, it probably includes all the planets visited in the movie, and then slides in some of the best bits from the anime, but again, I'm just guessing. This time, the game is a strategy RPG, and from what I can gather, it's the pretty standard fare. You know, grid-based system, move, attack, and then the enemies do the same, it's not exactly groundbreaking. Some levels have certain win and loss conditions, and when defending, you can choose between launching a counterattack or upping your evasion or defense stat, which can lead to some cool strategy. On a pure gameplay level, I'd feel decently confident in playing this game, even in Japanese, but the missions are rarely as simple as routing the enemy. It starts as early as Earth, where your first objective is to escape from Count Mecha's mansion while pursued by the authorities. If you try and take everyone on, or hell, even if you don't, you'll get cooked, because right from the start you're outnumbered and outclassed. Your actual objective is to keep living south in order to reach the 3-9. Then you land on Mars, which kind of just lets you lose to figure out what buildings you need to go to and who to talk to in order to advance the plot, and when that happens this game has the exact same trappings as Story Of. It's another interesting anomaly, and I say that because good luck finding any info about this game. Counting this video, the one you're watching right now, I can count the number of videos about this game on one hand, and even my searches in Japanese on both Google and Nico Nico failed to give me any significant results. Perhaps someday some brave soul will record the journey and ride the line to its conclusion. Until then, it remains yet another curiosity in the releases of Galaxy Express 3.9. With that, we've reached our destination. As of 2022, there haven't been any more Galaxy Express games since the DS entry 12 years ago. Will we ever see another one? I sure hope so. A modern revision of Story Of would be pretty cool, or maybe another game in a different genre like the DS games. Regardless, I hope this trip amongst the stars unlocks some memories for you. And if this was your first time learning about the series, I hope there's one thing you take away from this. And it's that you should watch Galaxy Express 3.9, available for streaming on Crunchyroll and on Blu-ray by Discotech Media. There, Toei, I shield your show for you. Please don't take this video down. Please? Hi, thanks for watching. I had to tear myself away from Elden Ring to edit this one. But you know what? I'm glad I did. Because it came out on 3.9. Because if I can't make a Miku video on this day, you'll bet I'll make another stupid pun. So I've, this is another video I've wanted to make for a very long time. This is one that I had in the... I had the idea for this back before I started doing this channel regularly in 2020. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I very much am proud of how this turned out. I feel like there was a lot of good information. And it's got a bit of everything. Making fun of the dub, obscure knowledge, all that. Really happy with how it turned out. So anyways, for the next video hint, well, first things first, uh, the anniversary is coming up. It's two years of doing regular content on this channel. Obviously, I'll be doing a brief update video on that. Brief, it'll probably be long because I'll be spitballing ideas or whatever. But that'll be coming up. I don't count that in the, uh, in the next video as the next video hint. And on that note, the next video hint is going to be Spur. If you know, you know. So uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.